I have a systematic way for choosing the perfect chart for your data or insight and it takes almost zero thinking and today I'm going to teach it with you. So there's only two things you need to know. The first thing is the four different types of insights and the second thing is how to use my charting decision tree. So in this video I'm going to teach you the four different types of insights and I'm going to share the decision tree for free. So let's jump into it. So let's start with the simplest of all insights, the comparison. Now a comparison is a way to examine how one data set is different from another data set or one variable is different from another variable. Some examples include things like comparing the revenue of business A with business B. So in that case, you're comparing two different groups. Another example might be comparing the profit of a single business over time. So in that case, you're comparing across different years. To bring some more color to this, let's look at some examples from real consulting firms. So in this example, we're looking at a BCG project called Melbourne as a global cultural destination. And here you can see a column chart. Across the X axis, they've listed all of the cities they're comparing. And on the Y axis, they're looking at the cultural infrastructure assets per million residents. So they're comparing one variable, which is infrastructure assets across multiple groups, which is the cities. So really simple to understand. Let's look at another example. So this example is also from BCG and it's from a project called Loose Dogs in Dallas. So on the right hand side, you can see a chart and you can see that chart is also a column chart, but this time it's a stacked column chart. And what you can see is they're comparing across different years and the variable or the data that they're comparing is the number of dog bites. This one's a little bit more advanced though because they've broken down dog bites into different groups, stray, restrained owned and loose owned. So in this case, the comparison isn't between groups. The comparison is actually between years. So comparisons, you've probably used them before. You've probably mastered them. As I said, they're the easiest type of insight to visualize. So let's look at the next type of insight, which is called a relationship. Now a relationship compares changes in one variable with changes in another variable. It's a little confusing, so let's look at some examples. So one example might be um, comparing changes in sales volume of ice cream with temperature. So you would imagine that as temperature increases, ice cream sales also increase. So you're comparing two different variables in that case. So this is another BCG slide from the previous project we talked about, which is Melbourne as a cultural destination. And here you can see on their slide, they have a scatter plot. Now on the Y axis, they have social media followers. On the, on the X axis, they have the number of international overnight visitors. So that action title looks like it's missing a word, but I think you can still gather that uh, they're trying to make a point here, which is as social media followers increase, the number of overnight visitors also increases. You can actually see that because they've circled four different cities, New York, Dubai, Paris, and London. And what they're saying here is that those cities have a large number of social media followers and a large number of overnight visitors. So that is a relationship. So the third type of insight that you need to master is called a distribution. Now in my experience, these are the least common insights that you need to show, but you may need to present it. So let's talk about it anyway. Now distribution shows how a data set is divided across time or across groups. So what you're really looking for is the frequency of a particular data set broken down by time or group. It's really hard to explain distributions and kind of tricky to understand. So let's talk about some examples. So one example would be, you might want to break down the number of FTE in a company by salary band. So you might have the count of FTE and 50 to 75K, 75 to 100K, etc. So that is a distribution of FTE by salary band. Let's look at a real example from BCG. So this slide comes from a BCG project called the Open Education Resources Ecosystem. Bit of a mouthful. Um, and I looked really hard to find a good example of a distribution and I couldn't really find one. So they are pretty uncommon. So what BCG are doing here is they're trying to illustrate the distribution of educators. They're saying that there are some educators that are innovators. There are some ed educators that are early adopters, early majority, late majority, laggards, etc. So what they're doing is they're counting the number of educators and along the bottom, they're grouping them by how quickly they adopt new materials. So as I said, not super common to show distributions, but you might need to do it so it's handy to understand. 
So let's finally talk about the last insight that you need to know, and that is called a composition. So a composition breaks down a particular data set or variable into the components that make it up. So some examples of this might be breaking down total company revenue into revenue by business unit. So you might have one column, at the top of the column is the total company revenue, and each of the different segments in that column is each business unit. So that's one simple example. So what you're looking at here is a slide from Oliver Wyman on the digital travel revolution. So this slide, it has a stacked area chart. And what is breaking down is the travel market stock value of different types of organizations. So what this is really good at is showing the composition of the overall travel market. And actually it's really good at showing how that changes over time. So in the beginning, in 1985, you can see that tour operators in classic airlines make up the largest proportion of the total travel market. And as you follow along the x-axis, you can see that more recently, online travel agents make up a big proportion. So you can see the composition and how that composition has changed. Now that is the last insight. So let's talk about the charting decision tree. So to use the charting decision tree, the only thing that you need to know is what is the insight that I'm trying to show? Is it a comparison? Is it a distribution? Is it a relationship or is it a composition? If you can master those and you can figure out which one of those you're trying to show, you simply open up the decision tree, follow the decision lines, and it will show you the perfect chart for your data. Now you can download the decision tree for free in the description below. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below and I'll answer them for you.